So I'm Claire and I guess I've been toying with this idea for maybe 15 years or so. I read about co-housing in a book by Tom Sine, Mustard Seed vs. McWorld, and he was talking about challenges uh, with affordability of housing but also church decline, church giving decline, and just saying we need to find ways to free up resources because people's lives are so full, full of debt, full of stuff full of busyness, so living in a more balanced and simpler and more generous way. Um, but then also increasingly I found challenges like I'd come home from the supermarket a bit depressed from looking at all the labels and seeing all the rows of the products we shouldn't be buying. And when there's got to be an easier way because when you're on your own, it's really taxing trying to sort of do the ethical thing and live with integrity or the moment you start speaking about environmental awareness or climate change or something again you find yourself compromising all the time so I thought how can how can we change the infrastructure of our lives to facilitate doing this more uh, better <laughs> more often and and maybe make make the whole process more rich and enjoyable as well mm. so Helen what intrigued you about the project um, well, I, well, I would say, um, when I moved to Chadston to be close to university, I actually ended up in a co-housing situation where uh, my landlord was, uh, renting out a few houses, but was then the, basically the main driver of a, the co-housing sort of situation where basically all the renters would come in and like sort of share a meal together, we'll share resources once in a while, we'll all go to the same church. And it was this, this lovely sort of grassroots community that sort of just sprung up between landlord and the renters. And it was, I just thought it was a wonderful thing to, to really do. And so um, I've just been looking for a chance to be able to relive all that again, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think there's just something about living in a community with like-minded people um, and then, and it's just that energy where if you start small, um, you can then build into a movement and then encourage other people to say, we can do this and be an example. And it's just easier to be an example in a group of people than it is to be an example by yourself. And then what, we, what Claire was saying is just, it's taxing when you're by yourself trying to be ethical and being, you know, trying to do the, I wouldn't say the right thing, but trying to do, um, you know, live your values. Yeah, so, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I guess for, well, I'm Hugh, <laughs> and for 10 years I've been um, trying to put little incremental steps into my life such that I can live uh, a lifestyle that doesn't have carbon impacts on creation. Um, and that's really hard as an individual. And so I'm hoping in, in a co-housing community with similar values that that'll be possible. Um, and so, yeah, I'm struggling in my own life with too much business. So I'm hopefully looking forward to less of it. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. What about you, Sarah? Have you got any hopes for this new living arrangement in a few years? That everyone will get along well. It's mm. mm. important. I've heard um, or read that co-housing is a great way uh, for adults to grow up because <laughs> um, we obviously teach kids to do the right thing and we figure, figure that by the time you're 18 you've done all the growing up that's needed but actually no, we can all grow in grace and compassion and understanding mm. and being considerate. So yes, that we'd all get along well is probably one of the biggest challenges and it's probably mm. one of the reasons people don't do this. There's financial barriers and practical obstacles with council and then not understanding this mode of dwelling um, but certainly it's the interpersonal challenges which is where hopefully we draw upon the resources of our faith as well mm -hmm. um, and have some pretty clear goals so our community um, has four values one obviously is community um, simplicity uh, I'm gonna get this wrong aren't I? is simplicity sustainability <laughs> Or is that justice? I think simplicity and generosity and justice are sort of wrapped up into one. Yeah. Sustainability uh, is the third. And then the fourth, if it was a Christian community, explicitly we'd probably call it discipleship, but we've called it teachability, that we're a community of people willing to keep learning, that we don't have it all sorted out, we don't have all the answers, we need humility, mm -hmm. and we need to be able to listen and learn and admit that we haven't got it all sorted and that we don't always get our way. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So mm. they're some of the values that even if people come from a slightly different faith perspective or a very different faith perspective, we'll gather around those values and hopefully that will help keep us on the same page. Mm. So you go, you've got separate accommodation. What, what's it going to look like? So there's eight um, separate effectively townhouses they're all um, two-story in this model but we know that there's older people that would love single story so if there's a phase two we'd probably factor in more single living level um, dwellings um, and then there's shared amenities so a common house with a larger eating area would have meals together but also the kind of tables where you could push them back and have space for something else um, I know some people want to ping pong table or something we'll have to see what we can fit in we might need some multi-purpose um, tables and things like that but a lounge area and a, a bigger kitchen where you could cook um, and part of the logic is the houses are smaller than the average home but a lot of people think they need guest rooms that they use twice a year and they need a big house for when they have a party once you know once or twice a year as well to go no that's what the common house is for we share that when you need it mm -hmm. but the rest of our lives let's try and live with less so that we can be more generous with with our time and energy mm -hmm. even things like cleaning you know looking at do we you know they sort of said oh most people will have an ensuite in the main bedroom i'm like i don't want three toilets for three people like that's more cleaning and it's ridiculous mm -hmm. we need to learn to communicate and to share you know yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of thing. Okay. So people watching this, if they want to find out more about it, is there a website? Yes. The website's anything? coming uh, once we've got our um, bylaws and legal documents to do with the Owners Corp and the Residents Association. Then we can register our organisation, and then we'll get a .org website. Um, but there's certainly a Facebook page, the Digs. The Digs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks like our time's come to an end, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll put some of those links online for people. So thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Jason. Thanks, Jason.